This is every major death in One Piece explained. And we have to start with the pirate who got boiled alive. See, this is Kozuki Odin, a man who ruled his country alongside his powerful samurai. But everything went south when they were attacked by the world's strongest creature, Kaido. And after they were defeated, Kaido decided to end their lives by boiling them in oil. But Odin wasn't about to let his men die without a fight. So he challenged Kaido, saying that if his crew could survive the oil for an hour, they'd be allowed to go free. Kaido thought this would be entertaining, so he agreed. And that's when Oda proved he was a Giga Chad. He grabbed a giant plank of wood and held it over his head for his nine samurai to stand on. That's right, he was literally holding the weight of nine people while being boiled alive. 10 minutes went by, then 30, and when the 60 minutes were over, Odin threw his nine men to safety, but he knew Kaido was too proud to let him live. So he struck his signature pose and was shot by his enemy. Dang, One Piece has some crazy deaths. Like poor Kisti Rouge died because she defied the laws of the universe. See, Rouge was the wife of the Pirate King, and when he was executed, the Marines were determined to make sure his bloodline didn't continue. So every woman who gave birth within nine months of Roger's death was thoroughly investigated. Rouge was pregnant at the time, so through sheer willpower, she kept Ace in her womb for 20 months. Yeah, she's a beast. This threw everyone off her trail, and Ace was born safely. Unfortunately, the whole process was deadly, and Rouge died shortly after giving birth. Even though she named her son Goldie Ace, he changed it to Porcus the Ace to honor his mother. And while that's a beautiful death, this next one is the complete opposite, cause this pirate died from a tummy ache. In episode one, we see Goldie Roger getting executed, but this isn't what actually killed him. See, the author revealed that Roger had caught a deadly illness. And knowing that he was gonna die soon, Roger turned himself into the Marines because he had a secret plan. He knew the Marines would take his imprisonment as a huge victory and publicly announce his execution. Everyone in the world would see his death and Roger took this opportunity to start World War II, announcing that the legendary One Piece was real and up for grabs, causing people around the world to become pirates. Now that's an impressive death, but the entire show would have ended if this next guy hadn't died. See, Ace was about to be executed by the Marines, but Whitebeard and Luffy weren't about to let that happen. They stormed the Marine base, and while Whitebeard's forces fought the Marines, Luffy got to Ace and freed him. Everything had gone to plan so far. Ace just had to run away and he'd be safe. But when Admiral Akainu started talking trash, Ace couldn't handle it and attacked him. Now this sounds cool, but Ace got wrecked because Akainu was way stronger than him. And after beating up Ace, he wanted to get Luffy too. Akainu lined up a fatal blow, and it looked like Luffy and the show were about to end when out of nowhere, Ace jumped in the way and took the punch to his chest. This punch was so hard that it went right through Ace's chest. Yeah, he got that Rengoku donut treatment. He fell into Luffy's arms and with his last words, thanked everyone for coming to save him. That's just sad. But this next death is sad for a whole different reason, because this guy earned the title for the strongest man and still managed to die in a fight. Whitebeard was a a literal legend, and not because he has the craziest glow up in the show. This dude had the power to destroy an entire planet, and that's because of his insane devil fruit, the tremor fruit. It literally made Whitebeard a walking earthquake. And you're probably wondering, how the hell did this guy lose a fight if he was this strong? Well, even though Whitebeard is so powerful, he's a surprisingly loving guy. So when his buddy Ace got kidnapped, he went to war. But at this point, Whitebeard was way past his prime and super sick, turning his rescue mission into a death sentence. Sentence. After being shot, stabbed, hit by cannonballs, and having half his face blown off, he passed away in style and died standing up. Now, One Piece deaths are always sad, but it turns out the show is notorious for faking deaths too. And Pell the Birdman had the dumbest fake death. See, after the Straw Hats defeated this bad guy, they found out that there was a bomb about to destroy the entire island. All hope seemed lost until this guy Pell picked up the bomb and with his bird devil fruit, flew it high up into the the air before exploding. This scene was so dramatic and heartbreaking that everyone thought Pell was gone. Plus, he was such a minor character. Why would the author even bother keeping him alive? Nobody knows, but a couple episodes later, Pell was shown alive and well, having somehow survived the massive explosion. And while it's the most famous fake out death, it wasn't nearly as important as this next fake out. Cause Sabo's fake death changed the entire storyline. See, Sabo was from a royal family, but he wanted to become a pirate. 
something his family wasn't happy with, so he decided to set sail without asking them. His family wasn't about to just let him go, so they shot Sabo's boat to pieces. At this point, fans were devastated. Sabo, Luffy, and Ace were fan favorites, and it was sad to see that one of them was dead. Years later, the anime revealed that Sabo had somehow survived by grabbing a piece of wreckage. He floated around the sea until a pirate crew picked him up, but the trauma from the attack made him lose all his memories. For the next couple years, he served as a crewmate until his memories were restored when he read a newspaper article sharing Ace's death. Now, at least it turned out that Sabo was alive, because Nami's mom was brutally betrayed and then killed right in front of her kids. Bellamere was a marine soldier who left her career to raise two orphans, Nami and Nojiko. Together, the three became a quirky but happy family. At least they were happy until this guy came around. Arlong was a horrible pirate who took over their entire island, making all inhabitants pay a fine for the right to live. Bellamere came up with a plan to hide Nami and Nojiko so she would only have to pay for her share. However, the kids were discovered and Arlong threatened to kill them. To save her kids, Bellamere told Arlong that her money would go towards the lives of Nami and Nojiko. Arlong accepted her offer and proceeded to shoot Bellamere in the face. The death was so gruesome that the anime censored it, having Bellamere be shot in the chest rather than in the head like in the manga. But the saddest part about Bellamere's death was what it did to Nami. In order to get the money to buy her island back, she decided to work under Arlong for a decade. And it wasn't until Luffy showed up that she was able to leave. Bellamere isn't the only mother who died, because Sanji's mom died for the lamest reason. Her name was Vince Moksora, and her husband, Judge, was obsessed with power. He wanted to create super soldiers and force Sora to understand undergo genetic mutations while pregnant with quadruplets. These mutations would force the children to be born as emotionless monsters. With a last ditch effort, Sora took a drug that would reverse the effect of these mutations. But this drug came with its consequences, making Sora deathly sick and rendering her bedridden for life. And if that wasn't bad enough, the drug didn't fully work. The effects were only reversed for Sanji, and his siblings all ended up as evil super soldiers. Sora's kids all ignored her except for Sanji. He would take care and even cook food for his mother while she was hospitalized, beginning his love for cooking. Unfortunately, Sora's illness was too much for her to handle, and she passed away. With this, Sanji lost the only person in his family who truly loved him. Now, Chopper's story is a little different because he killed his own dad. See, because he was a talking reindeer, Chopper was seen as a monster by everybody. That is, until he met Hiralook, a weird doctor who specialized in making failed concoctions that would explode in his face. Even though he wasn't a very good doctor, Hiralook treated Chopper with respect, something our reindeer buddy had never experienced. The doctor took Chopper on as his own son and taught him about life, but one of the things he taught Chopper would actually cause his death. See, Hiralook loved pirates and taught Chopper that the skull and crossbones on a pirate flag represented hope. The two lived happily together until one day the doctor fell deathly sick. Chopper was desperate to help his dad, so he scoured all their medical books and found a mushroom labeled with a skull and crossbones. In Chopper's eyes, this represented hope, so he went on a mission to find the special mushroom and gave it to his father to eat. But after eating it, Hiralook realized he had accidentally been poisoned. Not wanting Chopper to feel bad, the doctor drank one of his failed concoctions and died in an explosion of glory. Now that is a loving father. When it comes to deaths, Nico Robin had it the worst, because she lost everyone. When Robin was just two years old, her mom, Olvia, left her to go on a journey. And since Robin had a devil fruit power at a very early age, she was treated like an outcast, even with her family. The only place she found peace was at the library filled with scholars who treated Robin with respect. It was here that she fell in love with architecture, since the library had tons of books that weren't accessible elsewhere. These books were rare for a reason. They contained some of the deepest secrets of the world, something the world government really didn't want people to know. It was at this point that Robin Robin's mom came back, but she had a warning for the whole island. The marines had set their eyes on the island of Ohara, and they were going to attack. The scholars refused to listen to her, but realized their mistake when the marines arrived, because this attack was a buster call. An attack where they literally wipe an island off the map. Robin's mom knew the end was near. She asked her friend Saul to escape with Robin, but they were stopped by Admiral Aokiji. And with his ice powers, he turned Saul into a popsicle. But he didn't want to kill an innocent child, so he decided to let Robin escape. Escape. While on her rowboat, Robin turned around to see the destruction of her beloved island. Her mom, Saul, and the scholars. Everyone was gone. Now at least Robin survived, because the Straw Hat Brook literally died. You see, way before the beginning of One Piece, Brook was the captain of the Rumbar Pirates. However, after 
After defeating an enemy crew, Brooke and his crew realized that all the blades in the fight had been poisoned. The entire crew died, but since Brooke had eaten the Revive Revive fruit, his soul came back to life. And after months of searching, he finally found his body, but it had deteriorated to bones, which explains why he's a skeleton in the show. Before he joined Luffy's crew, Brooke wandered around on his empty ship with nothing to accompany him but the memories of his dead crew. Definitely a haunting experience. But One Piece's saddest death isn't even a person. It's the Straw Hat's first ship, the Going Mary. They used it for half of the series, but this couldn't last forever. When the Straw Hats got to Water 7, they learned that the Going Mary was damaged beyond repair. It makes sense, considering they didn't have someone on board to fix it, but it was still the last thing the crew wanted to hear. This news hit everyone right in the feels, but over time they came to accept that the Mary was unfixable. It wasn't easy for Usopp, though. He saw the Going Mary as an invaluable member of the crew. If Luffy was willing to give up on Mary when it couldn't sail anymore, what would stop him from leaving Usopp behind? Obviously, Luffy wouldn't do this, but these thoughts came from Usopp's insecurities. He's the weakest member of the crew, and unlike Nami and Chopper, he doesn't have an important role on the ship. This led to Usopp and Luffy having a showdown over the ship. Luffy won, of course, but he still left the ship with Usopp. Later on, the Straw Hats needed to escape from bad guys, and that's when Usopp and the Mary showed up. It turned out that the ship had been fixed up as much as possible, and it made its way to the Straw Hats on its own. They all escaped on the ship, but the Mary was on its last legs and started to fall apart once the Straw Hats were safe. The crew decided to give the Mary a funeral at sea, and the saddest scene in all of One Piece happened. Only a series as good as One Piece can make you cry over a ship. And anyways, look! Nami is crying! Click this next video to make her stop crying.